Hello, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, let's do your reading for July 2020. Now it's going to be a mid-July reading. I'm sure we're okay with that. Um, I'm not sure if you're feeling it too. I'm a Sag rising. I don't know if anybody else is feeling it. Um, but cancer season, I feel extremely, extremely lethargic. And all the excitement, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All the excitement and all the things that I thought, you know, that that are still on their way, right? That I feel as though me and other Sages um, have done the due diligence to create and set up the um, foundation for. That we had, you know, all of this stuff that we were anticipating. And then July came and cancer season hit. And I just feel like everybody was out like a light. Um... I don't know, and I just sort of, I'm just feeling as though um, things have really slowed down, right? This queen of pentacles, she's a queen, but nonetheless, earth energy, pentacles energy, very slow moving, if moving at all, really, to be completely honest. Um, and I think what she's doing right now in this moment is she's taking stock of what her next moves will be because just as things slow down things will also speed back up right so we are this is very temporary so i'm i'm also kind of caught and i'm saying i because i'm you know i i feel like i can best explain this from my own personal experience right now um with heavy sag placements um is that uh i lost my train of thought hmm interesting but basically that um, while like I'm very aware of the fact that even though I'm in a slow moment right now, things will eventually speed up. And so I'm caught in between kind of um, taking advantage of the slowness and also taking advantage of, you know, the fact that um, I have room in my schedule or that I have available time. And so what do I do with that? Um, and so I think the Queen of Pentacles right now, she is really doing her... Oh, the screen is weird. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. Weird. Um, but the Queen of Pentacles is sort of taking stock of where she's at right now, taking stock of what she's potentially been able to build for herself, right? That maybe the last couple of months, um, some of us have been able to see an income of cash, an income of money, um, that, you know, we were able to, that if you committed to creating that, um, to really being self-employed or quitting that job because you're not working it anyway, right? Hopefully, hopefully not, um, if, if you can help it. Um, and sort of, there were some moves, there were some things that we did, I would say back in May, that we've been able to turn over into some kind of a profit or into some kind of an abundance. And so now is a moment of being still with the abundance, right? And really looking at it and kind of looking at, well, what do I want to do with it? <laughs> what do I want to do? with all of the abundance that I've just managed. Like, I feel like for some of y'all, you've either, it's, it's like you've not had this amount of money ever in your life, or you've not had this kind of a platform ever in your life, or just things are, you know, you, you've hit you've hit a windfall, right, in, in many areas. Um, you've never been in a relationship that felt this good. Um, you've never felt this good single, your body never looked as great as it does right now, you've never been healthier, um, you know, your style is on point. So there's just a lot of things that are like clicking right now for Sagittarius and have been clicking, I would say, even like the, the like Pisces season was like the door open for everything falling into place, right? And so now it's Cancer season now we've rounded back around to another water season. And so the question here now is reflecting on that abundance, right? And, and, and that abundance in and of itself might feel uncomfortable. 
might feel strange, might feel weird. Um, there might be some self-sabotaging going on because, um, as I know personally, Sag energy is pretty good at, at sabotaging, right? Yeah, what it, you know, like that there, that while there is all this abundance coming in and all of these great things coming in, there is still a fear of losing it, right? That this nine of cups here indicates feeling really content and feeling really deserving. And this four of pentacles indicates a slide back into this feeling of like, maybe I'm not that deserving, or maybe it's all going to go away, or maybe I need to figure out a way to hold on to it. And so therefore you're holding on to it, which, you know, if we know anything about energies and transmitting and receiving and how things are cyclical, that if we're holding on, yeah, we're holding on, but what we're also doing without realizing it, or maybe we are realizing it and can't help it, is that we are also not allowing anything to come in, right? You gotta, you gotta lose some to win some. And I think because Sagittarius, y'all have spent a long time, similar to Aquarius, right? Sort of feeling out in the cold, that now that you've gotten a lick of, 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 of what it feels like when there essentially are no problems, that it's a bit, it's a bit scary. So let's keep going with the reading. Hmm. Pretty straightforward so far. Okay. Strength, Wheel of Fortune. And here's the thing, is that even if you continue to hold on, um, I think the, the luck and the abundance is so um, prevalent and um, on the present in your life right now that it will continue to come through. We have a strength card, the Leo card here. So some of you may be trying to really hold on to a Leo potentially. And that Leo, um, is coming on strong. Yes. In some cases and in other cases is also maybe trying to get away in some to some capacity or they're putting up a good a good fight they're not succumbing wholeheartedly if you are if you you know if you are um, entertaining a relationship with a leo um but they might be um sort of doing their best to hold back and to not sort of jump all the way in that there that this energy sort of is surrounding the relationship right now um, but it's a four of pentacles. It's not like, it's not a, it could be temporary, right? It all depends on how you want to sort of move through. Some of you could also be contemplating a business deal with an Aquarius or, um, an Aquarius has the potential to, has, has the potential to not only bring in great financial growth for you, but also through that. Um, that they help increase, that they help you to increase your self-worth and your value, right? The ways in which you value yourself. Okay. You know, Queen of Pentacles and the Star also very much means a, um, a realistic assessment of one's dreams, goals, um, desires, right? How you And how you can practically get there. Um, cause you know, Aquarius, though we are visionaries and though we are sort of the sign of the people, of the masses and, um, capable of, capable of creating great movement that oftentimes we tend to lack that practicality around that. So, you know, where can you be more practical, right? Um, where can you be less philosophical and lofty and more practical about the things you would like to accomplish about a relationship, um, about how you view abundance? This wheel of fortune here for me continues to indicate, 
um, like I said earlier with this Queen of Pentacles, that yes, that which that which slows down must also speed up. So I think the Wheel of Fortune is um, sort of an indication that things, though feeling very slow right now, and almost in that slowness feeling kind of um, excruciating to a certain extent, that you still, that, that, that things will speed up. Um, the projects you're working on will kick up. They will begin to gain traction. Um, and that the universe just really wanted to see you. And when I say the universe, I mean Saturn, right? We have your lovely friend Saturn here who you got so acquainted with, um, you know, a couple of years ago as it was, as Saturn was transiting through your, through your first house, through Sagittarius. Um, I think what their universe is really wanting to see right now from Sagittarius is the ability to follow through, the ability to complete the cycle, the ability to sit through the cycles when things are not necessarily going the way in which we had planned, we anticipated, we had hoped, you know, that there are... Um, and then also learning how to let go of things like past regrets, right? If there were past mistakes that you made, having the strength, right, to overcome that inner voice that tells you that, you know, you fucked it up or it's never going to work out again or it's not going to be the same. It won't be the same, right? Um, but I think the universe really wanted to see you have the capability to stick with something. And that was the purpose, I think, for a lot of y'all with Saturn transiting through your house, especially if it was happening, especially if you had, if you were going through your Saturn's return while Saturn was transiting Sagittarius, I think in like 2016, 2017 into 2018, a little bit. Um, but I think if that was sort of what was um, going on for you at that time, that part of the message, part of the relearning part of the rewiring I do not like how my hair looks right now <laughs> but part of the re what rewiring part of um the message the, the lessons to be learned was how did how do you commit to something even when it's not exciting even when it's not fun um even when it's not an adrenaline rush right what do you do when you are stuck here in this moment where things are slow, they're uncomfortable, they're still, they're extremely silent, um, and you just have to roll with it. And not only do you have to keep rolling with it, you have to keep doing the work no matter what. Pretty straightforward reading. Yeah, next is the moon. Yeah, the moon. So what do you do, right, when the answers are unclear and when the situation is unclear and that cancer season, right, the moon, very much blurs our own sense of reality because we're not, we're in a water season, right? We're in that element that is that transitory substance between this world and the next, right? So the boundaries are unclear. <laughs> like what we thought we were doing in this physical plane becomes very unclear. What we believe to be the next right step to the next right answer becomes kind of arbitrary um, and almost meaningless, to say the least. Uh, and that instead, what happens in cancer season is we get still enough and we get slow enough within our home, within whatever we consider to be our shell, right? We get still enough and slow enough to where this starts to creep up on us, to where the shadow, right? The, the moon begins to illuminate those parts of us and really ugly lighting, those parts of us that, you know, are easier to avoid in Gemini season, are easier to avoid in Aries and Leo season, are easier to kind of evade um, in an Aquarius season when the um, when the name of the game is connecting with the masses and that my own individual sort of sense of where I'm at doesn't really matter. Same with Sagittarius, right? But Sagittarius, you all can go there. Um, 
you all can definitely go there and have the capacity to, I feel, go to those depths and really to be really honest with oneself. The Emperor and the Nine of Pentacles. I like that. Okay, so towards the end of the month, we see a transition, I feel, from this energy, this, I mean, these two energies both, right? Where this Queen of Pentacles feels a bit passive and this Four of, of Pentacles feels though aware of having the thing, right, is unwilling to let go of it. And I feel like in this instance, it's fear. Sometimes this card can read a self-preservation and maybe some of you are facing a deal or facing an option um, where you are choosing to self-preserve and instead really look at your value, right? That if you are sort of being courted by people right now or... I hate that language because it's just gross. <laughs> um, but if you are being approached by people and if people are taking interest in you right now, maybe a Leo or an Aquarius taking interest, right? Um, that instead of sort of rushing into things, that there is, I'm seeing, what I'm seeing here is the application of the lessons, right? The application of not putting all the cards on the table when somebody shows interest um, or not doing things impulsively because you're fucking bored, right? That there is a shift more towards, well, what does that mean? How does that feel? What, a, you know, well, how can I apply what I've learned in the past three years to this situation? And so what I see happening as we come towards the end of the month, right, or now moving into mid-August, right, now we're going to be moving into mid, into mid Leo season, is of course, inevitably things ramp up because it's going to be Leo season and it's the height of the summer and it's, you know, all the things. And so things begin to ramp up for you in whatever way that needs to look like. And so we have this emperor card here. And so I think it's a transition from this Queen of Pentacles to this Emperor energy of feeling extremely sure and in charge and ready to go and ready to handle business, right? And ready to um, essentially, you know, not only handle business and be in the abundance, but to really appreciate it instead of fearing it. Um, so I like this. I like this for you. I like this for us. Do we have any final guidance or messages for Sagittarius for mid-July going into mid-August? I can't believe we're like halfway through the year, more than halfway through the year. Hmm. Three of Cups. Okay, so, um, and four of, so one's at the bottom of the deck, six of swords, there you are, or six of pentacles, there you are right there, um, ten of wands, so yeah, I, I feel as though, you know, um, with the bottom of the deck that, you know, you are really able to accomplish and build the things that you want to build, right? Going into August. So three of cups. I will say um, a warning of overindulging, of, of overindulging, right? Um, you know, please be safe. Please be careful. Um, yeah, please be safe. Please be careful. Uh, we're seeing spikes again in cases. We're seeing, you know climbing rate of, of deaths due to due to COVID. And so I would just be very careful about coming together in group dynamics, even if you feel as though it's safe. Um, and that it's it's odd because what we need most right now in these times of, uncert of, of uncertainty is to be able to come together and be with people, right? But I, I, I'm heeding this also as a warning, but I'm also taking this as, as a symbolic meaning of joy, a symbolic meaning of accomplishment, of celebration, 
um, and of being like these, I think these three people, regardless of what they have going on at home, they're able to come together and kind of leave that. And so regardless of what sort of, I think what ends up carrying you into this energy is a sense of joy regardless of what's going on or regardless of the stillness or finding joy in the stillness, right? Or being able to apply an attitude of, well, it's already mine <laughs> and, it, and I have the abundance and so therefore I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so I think that that's also the message here in this Three of Cups. But overall, I think this is a great reading for you all. Um, please be safe. Wear a mask. Even if you don't think any of this shit is real, that's cool. Like, people are still getting sick. Wear a mask. Like, you know, um, if wearing a mask is not something that you can do because of medical reasons, I totally understand. Um, and if you are trying to use those medical reasons... <laughs> To take advantage of that and doctor documents and create excuses for not having to wear a mask. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole other discussion. Um, but yeah, I probably said too much. And I love you all. And I will see you in August for Leo season. And have a happy rest of July. Bye.